Vicky is having a reality show audition today. Action. But first, she needs to fix her car quickly to get there. Three mechanics offer their help, but two of them are fake. Can you spot who exactly? The first person is wearing an expensive watch. It's too risky to wear them while working. And the third person's nails are way too long for this job, mm. so Vicky should choose the second guy. Hello. Vicky has just had an amazing audition. Yeah. The manager says, and finally, one last question. Can you spot the exact center of this table? How should Vicky answer this question? Oh. Vicky should put her finger confidently at the supposed center of the table and say, this is the center point. Afterwards, the manager may ask, hmm. how do you know if this is the exact center? In this case, Vicky can reply, your last question was the previous one so I don't have to answer further. <laughs> the manager just wanted to check how attentive Vicky is. The reality show takes place on an island. Vicky gets her first task. She needs to find a village with other contestants using this map. Vicky has to enter the maze at the left bottom and leave it through the exit point. There are two rules. She can go through one circle more than once, and she can move only by exchanging green and yellow circles. Can you help Vicky out? Here's the right way out. Vicky breaks through the maze and finds herself in a creepy room. The door behind her slams shut. To move on to the next level of the game, Vicky has to unlock this door. Can you help her crack this seven digit code? There's an inscription on the door which says, the seven C's. Vicky should try to think literally and enter seven C's. Vicky opens the door and continues her journey. There are three ways to reach the village, oh. but each path is hiding some danger. There's a creepy mummy hiding in the forest on the first path. The second path leads through a castle of a spooky vampire. And there's a hungry zombie waiting on the third road. Can you help Vicky choose the safest option? She should take the second path. The sun is shining, which means the vampire is sleeping. Finally, Vicky reaches the village, and here's her next task. Vicky and Nikki must hang on this beam for five minutes. Huh? Vicky has a fire under her legs, while Nikki has metal spikes that are moving randomly underneath him. Can you predict who's more likely to win? Vicky, take a closer look at the fire. There's a kerosene barrel under her feet, so the fire will go out in 20 seconds. To find treasures, Vicky has to unlock the final door. She needs to push one of these four buttons, but she only has one chance. What would you suggest? Vicky has to choose the red button. The symbols on the door are hints. Each of the four products can be red colored. After all the adventures, Vicky is finally having lunch. Can you spot anything odd here? Hello! Vicky gets a bed in a dormitory room. She will share it with four other contestants. Vicky drops her backpack on the bed and goes to the toilet. In a few minutes, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her phone. Vicky questions all her roommates. Sam says, I had a meeting in the lobby. My friend can confirm that. Fiona says, I was washing my hair in the shower, so I didn't see or hear anything. Diana says, I spent the last 20 minutes at the laundromat. I came back just now. And Mia says, sorry, I was doing exercises on the balcony, so I didn't watch your stuff. Who's lying? Fiona. She said she had just washed her hair, but her curls are dry. Uh -oh. The Greens housemaid Stacy forgets to close the window at night. In the morning, she finds out that some valuables had been stolen. Stacy calls the police. The detective checks the crime scene and puts together a list of all stolen items. Take a look at the picture. Can you tell what was stolen? The 
candlestick, music box, and vase. The detective interviews the Green's neighbors. He asks, did you see anything suspicious last night? Maya replies, yes, I saw a man in a black hat. Hmm. Peter says, I saw a suspicious woman with a big box by the Green's house. Hmm. Liam says, I saw someone dressed as a dragon and another guy with a hiking backpack. And Will says, I saw a strange masked man near the house 20 minutes after the Greens went to bed. Hmm. Who seems suspicious? Will, how did he know when the family went to bed? Bob's parents are going on vacation for two weeks and leave him alone. Yeah. His father says, Bobby, be very careful. No parties at home. But Bob throws parties almost every night. One night, his friends notice a car and yell, Looks like your dad's car is here, bro! Oh, no. All the guests clean up the mess as quickly as they can and hide. Parents arrive early and realize that Bob had a party. Ugh. How? There are four joysticks and a pizza slice under the sofa. Spelled forwards, it's what you do every day. Spelled backwards, it's something you hate. Can you guess this word? The correct answer is live. This is Mary. All her hats are white except two. Also, all her hats are red except two. And all her hats are black except two. How many hats does Mary have? Just three, one of each color. Kate enters the local supermarket to get some fruits. There's an intelligent glass pane installed in the fridge. This glass pane allows cherries and apples to pass through. At the same time, it keeps grapes and melons inside. Can you figure out which rule the glass pane is following? The glass pane only allows the fruits with double letters in their names to pass through. Can you spot anything odd in this picture? Too cool for winter. Kelly visits her bestie, Sarah, but Sarah is crying. <laughs> Kelly asks, what happened? Huh? Sarah doesn't say anything. She just shows Kelly a phone chat with her boyfriend. Can you tell what made Sarah so upset? He lied to Sarah about his dog's illness to hang out elsewhere. Take a look at the reflection in his sunglasses. Seems like he's chilling at the beach. Billy enters a dining room. Right away, he spots that someone had prepared a prank. What about you? Oh. This chair only has three legs. Lily gets a job as a flight attendant. This is her first flight from Hawaii to Mexico City. She's greeting the guests in the aircraft, but three passengers on the flight are not humans. Can you spot who? Uh -huh. This lady doesn't cast a shadow. Therefore, she's not a real human. And this one is dressed up too warmly for the hot weather. The guy over here is drinking a weird green liquid with bugs, which is kind of cringy for real human beings. Jill is walking in the park. Suddenly, a street dealer in a mask offers her an original golden watch for $20. Jill agrees, pays, and puts it on right away. Oh, yes. Soon, three people approach Jill to claim the watch. Mike says, this watch has belonged to my family for ages. I lost it near the ice cream van. Sheila says, someone stole my golden watch today. I was sitting on a ladder and fell asleep for a while. When I woke up, the watch was gone. Stefan says, I also lost my watch today. I think I dropped it on the third floor of this coffee shop. Can you help Jill return the watch to its actual owner? Hmm. The coffee shop doesn't have the third floor, and Mike's hand tattoo is identical to the dealer's, so it's the same person. Oh. So the watch belongs to Sheila. Several birds landed on trees. One bird for one tree. But in this case, one of them didn't have a tree of its own. 
Then they regrouped with two birds sitting on one tree. After this, one tree was left. How many birds and trees are there? There are four birds and three trees. Look at these four people in a grocery store. Can you figure out who's going to steal a watermelon? It's the man with a soccer ball. It seems as if he's holding something heavy. It must be the watermelon disguised as a soccer ball. You wake up and find yourself in a locked room without windows and only one door. You look around and notice a table. There's a piece of paper, a knife, and several inflated balloons lying on it. You pick up the note. It reads, To get out of here, you must puncture a balloon with a knife. But if the balloon bursts, you'll stay here forever. What should you do to make a hidden door open in one of the walls? You should deflate one of the balloons. After that, you can easily puncture it with a knife. You're walking along the beach and spot an expensive looking watch in the sand. There are only three other people on the beach. Who does the watch belong to? This guy's watch is in his pocket. The tan line on this girl's wrist doesn't match the shape of the watch. The watch must belong to this elderly lady. You've got a sack filled with coffee beans. You need to use this coffee to completely fill two other sacks of the same size. How do you do it? Put one empty sack into the other and fill them with coffee. Three young men came to a coffee shop to prepare for their final exam. A waiter came up to them and asked, Does everyone want coffee? The first guy said, I don't know. The second man answered, Nah, I don't know. And the third one answered, Yes. Can you figure out what the first two guys ordered? All young men ordered coffee. Each of them wanted to have this drink, but the first two couldn't know if it would be everyone's choice. If the first two guys hadn't wanted coffee, they'd have simply said no. So when the third guy heard his friend's replies, he figured out that both of them wanted coffee. And since he was going to get a cup, he said yes. You have to think outside the box to crack this one. 1 is to 3 as 3 is to 5, and 5 is to 4, and 4 is the magic number. Can you figure out the pattern? The word 1 has 3 letters, the word 3 has 5, and the word 5 has 4 letters. But the word 4 has 4 letters in it. And whatever number you try, eventually you'll come back to four, and the game will end there. Vincent got locked in a room with no windows and only one massive door. There's a panel with several buttons on the left and another one with a hint on it on the right. There's also a clock on the wall above the door. Which button should Vincent press to get out of the trap? The green triangle. The numbers on the panel represent hours. If you connect them on the clock face, you'll get a triangle. Add this number to the same one and multiply the result by 4. Then divide it by 8 and you'll have the very first number again. What number is it? It can be any number. You can try it out to make sure. Look at these women attentively. Which one seems to be suspicious?
It's the one on the right. The woman on the left was just adding some ketchup to her dish. See that bottle? But look at the pie the woman on the right is holding. There's a smartphone peeking out of the pie. What's it doing there? It's very suspicious. The police knocked on Michael's door late in the evening. They had a search warrant. They accused the man of stealing a big sum of money from a supermarket. Mike claimed that he hadn't left the house all day, but one of the detectives saw something in his living room, and it led to the man's arrest. What was it? Look at the date on the receipt lying on the table. It's the same as the date on the calendar, which means Michael lied about not leaving his house that day. Look at these guys attentively. Can you tell which one has drawn the graffiti? It's the guy on the left. He has some spray paint on his hoodie. An ant is two inches away from its home. With every next step, it covers half the distance to the entrance. How many steps will the insect have to take to reach its destination? The ant will never reach the door because every time it'll travel only half the distance. Now, how about solving some rebus riddles? This is the first one for you. High, 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 high. That's high five. The next one, noon good. What's this? That's how you greet people. Good afternoon. Okay, now try this one. Way progress. It's progress underway. Now let's check how attentive you are. Try to figure out what's wrong in the following images. There's no way anyone can wear those blue shoes. They're both left ones. How about this one? This horse looks rather natural among kangaroos, but it doesn't belong there. What's wrong in this picture? Why would a barn have a chimney? I suspect something is missing in this picture. Can you figure out what exactly? The bus doesn't have side mirrors and windshield wipers. Detective Lucas was called to investigate an accident. A car crashed into a store window and smashed the glass. There are two suspects. Both of them deny their involvement. Detective Lucas doesn't need much time to figure out who the culprit is. Do you know the answer too? It's the owner of the blue car. The pattern on its tires is the same as in front of the store. Detective Brown was having her morning coffee in a cafe when she heard a car screeching to a halt, then some loud shouting. She ran outside and spotted a man on the ground. His bicycle was lying nearby. There was also a car sitting next to the man. Detective Brown helped the cyclist up. The car driver came up to them. The cyclist exclaimed, He hit my bike with his car, making me crash! But the driver answered, I saw him losing control of his bike in the mirror. I left my car to check on him. Detective Brown immediately understood who was lying. Can you figure it out? Strangely, the car doesn't have side mirrors, 
and all that stuff in the back seat blocks the view of the road, so the driver couldn't have seen anything in his rearview mirror either. He's lying. A man wearing a hat, a bandana covering his face, and dark sunglasses robbed a bank. The police have three suspects. Look at them and try to figure out which one is the criminal. Usually, people tie bandanas under their ears, but in this case, the bandana covers the robber's ears. It probably hides something that distinguishes the man from other people. The criminal must be that man with only one ear. When Louisa entered the office, she noticed that her colleague Anna was very upset. It was the beginning of the working day, but someone had already stolen her purse. Only those who worked in the company could get into the office. Louisa questioned her colleagues. Maria, who worked in IT, said she'd been fixing somebody's computer. Jane, the secretary, answered she'd been on the phone with some clients. Andrew, a sales manager, said, I've just returned from a three-hour long meeting. I'm exhausted. Can you figure out who took the purse? Andrew, the working day's just started. How could he come back from such a long meeting? Jack is in a cold cell. There's only ground under his feet. In the cell, there is one window, but it's impossible to escape through it. It's located too high above the floor. There are no stairs and no chairs, just a shovel. The man needs to get out of the cell as quickly as possible. He can't dig a tunnel and go deep underground since the walls are really thick. Jack would get exhausted long before finishing digging his way to freedom. Can you guess the easiest way out of the cell? He needs to dig a large hole in the ground and use the dirt to make a small hill. He can then climb it and reach the window. Ava has been wandering through the desert for days. She's tired, thirsty, and hungry. Finally, she arrives at an oasis. Yes. But to get to it, she needs to choose one of three paths. At the entrance of the first path, there's a huge dragon with two heads. In the middle of the second path, there are hungry tigers. And the third path is swarming with thousands of scorpions. Which path should she choose? The first path. Dragons aren't real, so she'll be safe there. <laughs> Jenny walks into a cafe and orders a cappuccino. Hello. The cashier tells her it's her lucky day. She'll give Jenny her cappuccino for free if she manages to answer a riddle correctly. Yes. The cashier says, There are two buckets filled with water all the way to the top. The buckets are of the same height, but the temperature of the water inside the first bucket is 25 degrees Celsius while in the second bucket, it's 25 degrees Fahrenheit. If a person drops a coin in each bucket at the same time, which coin will hit the bottom of the bucket first? It takes Jenny a few minutes to answer the riddle, but she gets it right. Can you guess what she answered? She said that first, one of the coins would hit the bottom of the first bucket, it has to do with the state of the water in each bucket. At 25 degrees Celsius, water is liquid, while at 25 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns into ice. Emily finally went to Paris. On her first day, she bought a baguette and some cheese and went to the park to have a picnic. Mm. She sat down and cut the baguette into four pieces. A random person next to her said, nice. Hey, it took you 12 seconds to do that. Can you figure out how long it would take Emily to cut the baguette into eight pieces? It would take 28 seconds. Here's how it works. To cut a baguette into four pieces, she needs to make three cuts. If it takes her 12 seconds to make three cuts, it means that she makes one cut in four seconds. Now, if she wants to cut the baguette into eight pieces, she'll need to make seven cuts. So, seven cuts, four seconds each, 28 seconds. Every Sunday, Mrs. Moore gives her four daughters some pocket money. Half of the entire amount goes to the eldest daughter, Brianna. 
The second sister, Amy, gets half of the amount Brianna gets. Kate gets one-sixth of the total amount. And the remaining $10 goes to the youngest daughter, Nikki. How much money does Mrs. Moore give to her daughters? Once again, Brianna gets half of the money. Amy gets half of the half, which means one quarter of the original sum. And Kate gets one sixth. They are all some fraction of 12. So Brianna gets six twelfths, Amy gets three twelfths, and Kate gets three twelfths. Together, this adds up to 11 twelfths, which means that Nikki gets one twelfth, which equals $10. The whole sum is 12 twelfths, which is $120. Brianna gets $60, Amy receives $30. Kate is given $20. Hey, if I were Nikki, I would complain. Ms. Taylor is the owner of a boutique that produces and sells expensive ceramics. On a Friday, when the working week was almost finished, she went to put the day's earnings in the safe and was shocked to find out that the money was gone. Someone had stolen it. Ms. Taylor suspected it was one of her workers. She asked each of them what they'd been doing that day. Sloan, the sales manager, said she'd been looking for new clients. Jake, the potter, said he always made one cup a day, and he showed all the cups he had finished that week. Lily, the designer, said she'd been working, but she also admitted she hadn't really been productive that day because of some family issues. Hmm. Who lied? Jake. There are five working days in a regular week. The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. Probably the day he needed to steal Miss Taylor's money. Two cars, blue and red, started traveling on the same highway at the same time. The blue car is going at a speed of 60 miles per hour, and the red car is going 40 miles per hour. However, after some time on the road, they come across each other at one point. How is this possible? Well, they're traveling in opposite directions, so eventually they would pass each other anyway. Carl was a rich man who had two grown-up sons, Ethan and Christian. They lived in a big mansion. One day, Carl noticed that his expensive ancient vase was missing. The only people who were at home the night before were his sons. He didn't want to involve the police, so he decided to interrogate the guys himself. Hmm. He saw Ethan driving through the gates, he was back from his daily visit to the gym. The young man said that the night before, he'd been practicing guitar and hadn't noticed anything strange. Then, Carl met Christian near the pool. The guy told his father, Now I understand. Yesterday, I saw Ethan putting a box in the backseat of his car. It must have been the vase. But Carl immediately realized it was Christian who had taken the vase. How did he know? because Ethan drives a sports car. It only has two seats. He couldn't have put the box in the back seat. It means Christian is lying. Ooh. A math teacher told his students about Roman numerals. After that, he asked them to draw just one line and turn nine into six. His only condition was that the students couldn't take their pens off the paper until the line was finished. Mark was the first one to complete the task. How did he do it? He drew the letter S in front of I, X, and got six. There's a patch of magic grass in a field, and it doubles in size every day. If on day one, it's just a patch of grass, on day two, it's twice bigger, and so on. It'll take 10 days for the grass to cover the entire field. How long will it take the grass to cover half of the field? The patch of grass doubles in size every day, so on the ninth day, half of the field will be covered with it. In a kingdom far, far away, an old king lived. The king was worried he had no heirs to his throne. One day, he came up with an idea. He decided to give each child in his kingdom a seed. 
he promised to make the child who grew the most beautiful plant his heir. Three months later, thousands of children came to the palace. All of them had amazingly tall green plants in their hands, but one girl had a pot that was empty. However, she was the one the king chose to be the future queen. What made him do so? It turned out that the king had given the children fake seeds. The girl turned out to be the only honest kid. You were walking through a forest when you saw a big lake. In the middle of the lake, you spotted three cages floating on the surface. Inside, there were three people. Adam's cage was blocked by a huge chunk of ice. Luke's cage was locked with a massive padlock. And on top of Helen's cage, there was a container with boiling water. You could help only one of them. Who should you pick? You should choose to help Luke. The ice blocking Adam's cage will melt sooner or later. The boiling water would evaporate and Helen would be able to escape. But Luke won't get out of this cage on his own. After having had an argument with a powerful magician the night before, Mark woke up in a dark room. Luckily, his cell phone was still working. He switched on the flashlight and saw three doors. Apparently, the first one led to a sea swimming with sharks. The second led to a cave filled with sharp rocks and bats with giant claws. And the third led to a forest with brain-controlling zombie mosquitoes. Which door should Mark uh -oh. open to escape? The second door sounds like a pretty safe choice. Bats may look scary, but they won't attack you if you don't provoke them. Apparently, Mark didn't learn his lesson and argued with the same magician again. And, surprise, surprise, he got locked in a room with three doors. The only thing he saw there was this note. You have to pick the correct door, and I'll set you free. All the doors lead to freedom, but not all of them are safe. The first one is incredibly hot. You can get badly burned. The second door is electrified. And the third door is covered with acid that eats through everything but metal. Mark thought for a moment and chose one of the doors. Which one? Look, Mark is wearing sneakers with thick rubber soles. He can use his foot to open the second door. Thanks to his shoes, he won't get an electric shock. Two identical vans were crossing the bridge when it collapsed. The cars fell into the water and started to sink. Luckily, the drivers were unharmed. But they had to figure out how to get to the surface really fast because the van started to fill with water. One of the drivers began to push the closest door, and the other tried to open the side door. Who has a higher chance of survival? The first driver won't be able to open the door because of the water pressure, but the side door in the second car is a sliding door. With some effort, the second driver will be able to open it and escape. You got lost in a forest. It's getting dark. Very soon, wild animals will start their hunt. There are four roads. You can choose from the north, south, west, and east. But the north path will take you to a super massive black hole. The south road goes through a lake full of huge whale sharks. If you take the west road, you'll end up at the edge of a ginormous pit in the ground, which can't be crossed even with the help of a rope. And the east path will bring you to a sky-high mountain. It's impossible to climb over it. Which path should you opt for? You need to follow the south road. Whale sharks aren't dangerous to people, and they will let you swim across the lake without any problems. You are locked in a prison cell. You have been given some food and a bucket of water. That's enough for three days. You could potentially escape, since there are three doors leading out of the cell. But the first one opens to a wall of fire. The second leads to a cave where a polar bear and its cub live. And behind the third door, there's a lake with hungry crocodiles. Which door should you choose? The 
first door. The bear will try to protect the cub even if you offer it your food. Not everyone can swim in the lake swarming with crocodiles. So you should use your bucket to put out the fire with the water from the lake. At the same time, you can distract the crocodiles with your food. You got kidnapped and locked in a stone house. It doesn't have any doors and it's impossible to break its walls. But there are four doors you can escape through. Behind the first door, it's extremely cold. If you choose to go there, you'll turn into a block of ice in a matter of seconds. The second door opens into a water tank with hungry sharks. Behind the third door, the sun shines so brightly that it burns everything that gets there. And the room behind the fourth door is filled with toxic gas that won't let you breathe. Is there a way to escape? Wait until the evening when the sun goes down and escape through the third door. One night, you find yourself stuck in an old, spooky castle. You hear someone chasing after you. You're running faster and faster, but suddenly, a dead end. Luckily, a bit later, you notice three doors in the wall. But behind each door, there are some horrifying creatures. The first door hides zombies. Werewolves are behind the second one. And if you open the third door, you'll come face to face with bloodthirsty vampires. Which door should you open to have a chance to survive? Escape through the second door. The moon is waxing at the moment, and werewolves transform only on the full moon. One day, Detective Larson received a call from his friend Melinda. She told him she had been out getting groceries, but when she came home, her husband Michael was on the floor, unconscious. Oh, no. The detective had three suspects. The cook said he'd been in the kitchen all day. The security guard claimed he had spent all morning cleaning the swimming pool in the area around it. The maid told the detective that she'd been tidying the living room since early morning. Larson immediately understood who was behind the accident. How about you? It was the security guard. Cleaning swimming pools doesn't sound like something a security guard would be hired to do. Lisa and Olivia managed to escape from a sinking ship. Lisa was dragged away by a powerful current and woke up on an island. Olivia was still floating in a lifeboat, but she was extremely thirsty. Which of the two girls will survive longer? It will be Lisa. The water she has will keep her going a little bit longer. Olivia can't drink ocean water because the amount of salt in it is dangerous to people. Some weirdo caught you and offered to choose a place where you'd have to stay on your own for the following three weeks. If you managed to survive, he'd set you free. He gave you three options, a desert with several cacti growing around, a sunny field with flowers where you'll have a banana and a glass of water, and a beach under the stormy skies surrounded by sharp cliffs with high waves crashing against the shore. Where will you have more chances to survive? In a desert, there's no water and you won't last long. One banana and a glass of water won't help you to survive for three weeks. Your only choice is the beach. The sea will provide you with food. And since the weather is cloudy, you'll be able to drink rainwater. Hmm, Hazel is a rock climber. She's packing bags for an expedition to Everest. Can you spot any extra items in her suitcase? It's unlikely that you would need these fancy high-heeled shoes in the mountains. Also, this fragile vase is useless on a hike. Hazel orders a taxi to go to the airport. She's using this app. There are four free cars in her neighborhood, but only one of them can reach Hazel's home. Can you tell which one?
It's the third car. Hazel arrives at the airport. She takes a closer look at her ticket and faints. Can you guess why? The name of the airport on the ticket doesn't match the airport that she's in. Hazel needs to go to the correct airport as quickly as possible. These two drivers are eager to give her a ride. Can you tell who will reach the destination faster? Although the second car looks more expensive and chic, it has a flat tire. Therefore, Hazel should choose the first driver. Finally, Hazel boards her flight. She falls asleep right away. She wakes up in a while and realizes that someone has stolen her phone. Hazel questions three suspects. Bill says, I've been watching a movie within the last hour. I didn't look around. Sorry. Kyle says, I was sleeping too until you woke me up. And Sheila says, I'm afraid of flying, so I listen to soothing music with my eyes closed. Can you guess who stole Hazel's phone? Nobody. She just dropped it on the floor over here. See? It's dinner time. Kyle offers Hazel his dessert if she succeeds in guessing the date of his birth. Here's a hint. The day before yesterday, Kyle was 22, and next year, Kyle will be 25. Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? Today is the 1st of January, and Kyle's birthday was on the 31st of December. Therefore, Kyle was 22 on December 30th. Then he turned 23 on December 31st. This year, he will turn 24. And the next year, 25. Finally, Hazel lands in Nepal. She enters the baggage claim area and sees three odd things right away. Can you see them too? There's a dog in this bag. Animals don't come with regular luggage. This baggage cart lacks all wheels and floats in the air. And these boats are parked outside the window along with the planes. Hazel arrives at the meeting point for climbers at the local restaurant. But there's no one there. The cleaning lady says, I was busy cleaning the toilet and just got back. I didn't see anyone. The guard says, oh yeah, the meeting has been delayed for tomorrow, that's for sure. And the waiter says, I've been here all the time, and I haven't noticed any crowds of tourists. Who's lying? The guard. See this sign? The meeting takes place on the roof. That's why they didn't see the tourists. On the way to the roof, Hazel sees a woman who's cleaning a window on the 10th floor. Suddenly, she slips and falls. She doesn't have any safety equipment and nothing to soften her fall. But yet, she's not hurt. How can this be? The woman was cleaning the window inside the building. (laughs) Finally, Hazel meets her group of climbers. But one of these people is an imposter. Can you guess who? This guy has tentacles instead of a hand. He's definitely not from this planet. Hazel goes on an expedition with the group. She stops to take some pictures and gets lost. In a while, Hazel finds three roads leading to the next mountain village. But every path hides some adventure. There's a hungry snow leopard walking on the first path. There's a herd of Himalayan yaks on the second path. And road 3 leads through an avalanche risk area. Any movement can make the snow slide down. Which way is more or less safe? (laughs) 
Hazel should choose the second path. Although these yaks look pretty scary, in fact, they're friendly plant eaters. Hazel checks into the local hostel. She leaves her bags in the room and goes to see the sights of the village. After a while, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her passport. Hazel calls the sheriff and he interrogates four suspects. The hotel manager says, I was dealing with a tourist group that has just arrived. I didn't notice any robbers. The hostel owner says, I was dealing with the bathroom clog all day. The gardener says, I didn't enter the hostel. I was watering the roses in the garden. And the cleaner says, I was too busy feeding fish in the lobby. I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cleaner. Can you see any aquariums in the lobby? Hazel visits a local restaurant. The cook offers her three meals to choose from. Can you help her pick the safest option? There's a worm in these instant noodles. And there are too many flies around this rice. It's probably not very fresh. So, Hazel should choose this sandwich. In the village, Hazel meets the local guide, Luke. He offers to show Hazel the shortest way to the top. But first, Hazel has to solve his riddle. Luke and his wife have seven children. Half of them are sons. How is this possible? Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? They are all sons. Luke and Hazel begin the trip. On the way, he offers Hazel to visit the local magic caves. Hazel agrees, but eventually she gets lost inside one of the caves. She wanders around for a while and finds these three tunnels. There's a portal to the sun in the first tunnel. There's a box with an ancient magic gemstone inside the second tunnel. This gemstone curses anyone who sees it. And finally, the third tunnel hides a bunch of poisonous scorpions. Which way should Hazel choose to survive? The second one. The gemstone is locked in the box, so Hazel should just walk by it. Hazel needs to cross this toxic swamp to continue her trip. The only way to do so is to jump from one block to another. Can you help her choose the last stone wisely? Each block has a particular number. 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, and 21. This sequence is formed by adding the number 4. Therefore, the remaining block should be 25, not 27. Hazel continues her journey and finds this weird sign engraved on a rock. Can you help her crack the meaning of this code? The arrow is pointing to the right. The message is mirrored. If the P.O.T. is on the right, it means that the T.O.P. or top is on the left. Now Hazel knows the right direction. It's getting really cloudy. It'll rain soon. Hazel decides to hide in one of these three caves and have some lunch. Can you help her pick the safest place to stay? Take a look at the track. The first cave is probably home to a family of bears. Mother bears can get furious when it comes to their cub protection. As for the second cave, it's obvious that a human being has entered it and come back out, which is encouraging. And now, let's take a look at the third cave. A human entered it but never came out. Therefore, Hazel should choose the second cave. Finally, Hazel reaches the top of the mountain. Suddenly, a kind wizard pops out of nowhere and greets her. He suggests Hazel relocate to a hidden magic world. He says, I'll show you the gates if you solve my riddle. 
So listen carefully, I'm very fragile, and even just saying my name could break me. What am I? Any ideas what it might be? The correct answer is silence. The wizard chose Hazel the Gates. There are three doors, but only one of them leads to the magic world. Can you help Hazel figure this out? Only the second path leads to the final destination. Bye bye